Family Theater presents The Kirkwood Family, Jack, Lil, and Lee. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Martians and the Coys, starring Jack, Lil, and Lee Kirkwood. <laughs> Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Martians and the Coys, starring Jack Kirkwood as Pa Coy, Lil Kirkwood as Ma Coy, and Lee Kirkwood as Rhododendron. Here on the home front, the specter of the flying saucers persists. From almost every part of the nation, reports continue of the visits by the mysterious objects. There is still no official explanation of the phenomenon. Scientists say the flying objects are not light reflections, and they are not men from Mars. As they insist, there is no life as we know it on that planet. And so the story goes. <laughs> there is no life on Mars. Quite amazing. Monitoring these Earth radio casts, isn't it, Dr. Zim? Oh, quite. <laughs> ah, how little these Earth creatures know of the universe. They have a lot to learn. Ah, and so have we, Malco. That is why we are here, to increase our knowledge of these Earth creatures. What are your plans, Dr. Zim? To continue cruising about the Earth, observing? No, 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 no. The time has arrived for a different approach. In order to understand these Earth men completely, we shall have to take a few specimens back home to Mars with us. Ah, I see. Study them at leisure. Yes, quite, quite. We shall make a detailed scrutiny of them. Oh. Have you selected the subject? No, 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 no. I... Uh... Uh, there's a likely-looking city below us there. Thousands to choose from. No, no, no. I want no city dwellers. They are anemic, nervous, neurotic, and in far too much of a hurry to be good specimens. I, I've been watching a group of rather unique people. They are slow, methodical. An excellent study for us. In what region are these people found, Doctor? In the hill country. Oh. You mean the ones they call... Hillbillies. Hillbillies, yes, yes. They are exactly what we need for our study, Malcolm. But, Dr. Zim, how are we to take these people with us? They are obviously terrified of us already. <laughs> I propose to make them a friendly proposition. But suppose they refuse to come. Then we shall take them, willingly or not. Order the robot pilot to resume speed and come with me to the observation deck. <clears throat> Ma, shush that fly off in my nose, will you? It's crawling around there and making me twitch something awful. Oh, shush it off yourself, you lazy good for nothing. I'm busy. Oh, and you ought to do it. You're closer to it than I am. <laughs> uh, and if I do it, I'll disturb the hound dog and he's sleeping so peaceful across my chest here. <laughs> uh, rhododendron, take the broom and swat that fly off on your father. All right, Ma. <laughs> oh, doggone, now look what you're going to done. You know Rody can't hit the broad side of a barn. Well, maybe you should have had Grandpa hit the fly for you. His aim's perfect, ain't it, Grandpa? <laughs> yep, he never misses. Somehow I don't trust him when he's shooting my way. 
Well, come on and get up, ho. Oh, all right. I think I'll just take a little stroll up by the still, see how things is getting on. You've been inspecting that still a mite too often to suit me. Now, Ma, you know me and Luca's working on a new recipe. We gotta watch it mighty close. Why? Well, that batch of corn squeezings is a very delicate mixture we got this time. It'll either blow sky high or it'll be the most delicious. There she goes. Hey, what's that? Sounds like hailstones are falling. And more than likely if the button's off Luke's leather jumper. It fell in the mash yesterday. Pa, quit your gabbing and fetch me some eggs from the chicken yard. Oh. No. And slop the hogs while you're down that way. Oh, there's something for me to do. Slop the chicken and feed the hogs off. <laughs> hey, watch it, Tarly. Hey, Ma, Ma, come on out here. Look at this. Uh, what is it now? Here. Oh, oh, boy, if you're looking for another excuse to get out... Land sakes! There, do you see it too? Why, uh, yeah, what is it? I'm darn if I know. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't been dipping into me and Luke's recipe of my two generous life. Oh, it's real all right, but what in tarnation? What is it, Ma? Well, that's a good question, Rody. I'm blamed if I know. <laughs> Ever see the likes of that before, Grandpa? Hey, it's coming from the direction of the holler. Maybe when the still exploded, it dug the dirt. Thing. Oh, that ain't nothing that was ever buried in the ground, Pa. It looks more like a... Why, well, I declare. I declare. It almost looks like one of them spaceships you hear about nowadays. Spaceship? Space for what? Look it. It's settling down in our back field there. Hey, you mind what you doing? Careful, Ma. We don't get the third thing riled up at us. I'll show her how to get riled up if I don't quit scaring my chickens. Come on, let's go down there and have a look at this thing. Now, well, wait a minute, Ma. Let's not go rushing into things. Let's kind of weigh the spell and see what it's going to do. Wait nothing. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. Look, here comes Luke. I guess he's seen it, too. Oh, that worthless Howdy, lady. Howdy, folks. I was just coming over to tell you, but I guess you've already seen it. Oh... Howdy, Rody. Hello, Luke. Howdy, Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon that contraption is, anyway? Well, we ain't never going to find out just standing here. Let's go down and see. Yeah, well, if it ain't the queerest looking thing that ever was, I'll put in with you. Looks like a big aluminum biscuit. Only with windows. It reminds me of Cy Fernie's new silo when it was new. Oh, a silo ain't got windows, Luke. No, it looks more... It, it's, uh... Hey, it's uh, kind of spooky looking, ain't it? Hey, uh, hey, what's uh, that? Uh, oh, oh. It, it's a door. Yeah. And there's somebody inside that crazy machine, Hope. There he is. Well, oh, well I'll be guarding. What is it? Queer-looking critter, ain't he, Ms. Coy? Quick, Pa, run up to the house and get the sassafras tea. The man's sick. Look, he's green. No, oh, no, <laughs> thank you, madam. I'm quite all right. You see, I'm always green in color. Yeah? Must be something powerful wrong with your diet, son. Oh, no, 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 you don't understand. You see, I'm from Mars. Well, I declare... You hear that, Ma? He's from Mars. Well, land sakes alive. He may be a relative. Yeah. <laughs> you know, me and Mars got people in Hannibal and Centralia, both. Hannibal? Centralia? Yeah. You said you were from Mars, Missouri, didn't you? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. 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 I, I, I'm, I'm from Mars. Uh, uh, Mars. Oh, Mars, Mars. Uh, you know the planet. Yeah. Planet? What's that? Oh, surely you know what a planet is. Yeah. Why, the Earth is a planet. The universe is made up of myriads of planets, each spinning on its axis, each traveling in its own orbit, and making each day its own prescribed number of turns on the axis and about the sun. Pa, uh, you better go up and get that sassafras tea after all. I think so. No, no, I'm all right, I tell you. But, uh, uh do come in. We'd love to have you inspect our ship. Well, thank you. That's real neighborly. Um, let's go in and have a look around, Ma. Uh, well, I'll, uh, uh, think we should, Grandpa? Oh, all right, then. Help me up, Luke. <laughs> 
Uh, allow me, madam. Well, thank you. Land sakes alive, son, your hand is as cold as ice. You sure you ain't having a chill? Oh, quite sure. You see, we on Mars are cold-blooded creatures. I think he's kind of cute. Oh, Rhody, hush your mouth. Well, I do. I like little fat men. Even green ones? Oh, you. Oh, whom have we here, Malco? Oh, uh, we have guests, Dr. Zim. Here, yeah, I'm Hope Coy, and this here is my missus. And yonder's Luke, he's one of the neighbors. And this one here, with the hair growing down her back. <laughs> Too bad it didn't grow on her head. <laughs> That's my daughter, Rhododendron. Rhododendron? Yeah. Oh, what a pretty name. Uh, that's uh, a flower, isn't it? Yeah. We'd run out of people names by the time she was born. And, oh, yes, and that's Grandpa there. <laughs> Not in here, Grandpa. Well, welcome. I'm Dr. Zim in charge of our little expedition. This is my assistant, Mel. Well, how do you do? Nice to meet you. Well, uh, what, uh, what brings you to these parts, Mr. Zim? We have been cruising about your country for some time now, looking you over, as it were. I hope we haven't frightened you. Well, oh, land sakes, no. <laughs> we are just a bit different in, in appearance. <laughs> oh, shucks. You ought to see some of our relatives in Centralia. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Oh, don't pay no attention to him, Mr. Zim. Say, this is quite a machine you fellas ride around in. It sure is. Uh, can we look around? Oh, by all means, by all means. Uh, perhaps you'd care for a little ride. Well, uh, but, I... but you'll never know you're off the ground. Close the door, Malco. Our mission is almost complete. Come on, Maul, let's give it a try. Might be kind of fun. I'm ready. Well, I would like to have the rest of the young'uns along. There are more in your family, Mrs. Oh. Coy. Oh, yeah. Why, of course, most of them is married and out on their own by this time. There's just nine left at home now. Yeah, Rhody here, she's an old maid. Going on 12 and still not married. Oh. <laughs> nine more, eh? Well, the more we have on our little uh, excursion, the better, eh, Melko? Well, I don't reckon they'll be back much before supper time, Mr. Zim. Then why don't you bring them all down after supper, Mr. Coy? Oh, I've got a better idea. Why don't you two fellas come on and have supper with us? That's a good idea, Ma. I got a possum and some sow belly out in the smokehouse. I'll uh, go get her. Yep, and I'll fix up some nice dandelion greens. Oh, nothing green, please. Chlorophyll disagrees with us. That's so? Well, what do you fellas eat? Well, our food on Mars is all refined and concentrated. Yes, in fact, most of our meals are taken in capsule form. Capsules? You mean like pills? Well, yes. Goodness, no wonder you're a funny color. <laughs> Just thinking about taking pills three times a day is enough to turn me green. Uh, please don't go to any trouble for us, Mrs. Coy. Oh, it won't be no bother. When the family gets home, we'll all have a nice, quiet meal together. Right, Grandpa? <coughs> Ma, can I have some more jam over my harmony? Ma, he's sweet as Marcella. Oh, about, about some more frog legs. Don't mind if I do, Luke. No, no, I mean about how about me having some more. You're making an awful hog of yourself, but go ahead. Uh, Mr. Zim, why don't you and your friend have something else? Uh, pardon? I said... I said, why don't you and your friend have something else? No, no, thank you. We've, we've had quite enough. Ma? Yeah? You through talking? Yeah, why? Yeah, you can't think of it. Well, I'm a They all have healthy appetites, don't they? Oh, they sure do, bless their hearts. They always did eat hearty. This is the only family I've ever seen that could get sparks out of their knives and forks when they eat. Makes mealtime near unbearable in the summer. <laughs> Well, uh, everybody ready for a dessert? <laughs> we got a sweet for dessert, Ma? Yep, I baked a nice gooseberry pie, especially for tonight. Now, pass me your dishes. Come on, children. How come you're so funny looking, mister? Oh. Maybe Ma's cooking made him sick. <laughs> he was green before he ate. Yeah, but he's greener now. Hey, that's right. You sick, mister? Well, as a matter of fact, I do feel just a bit ill at the moment. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone our trip until tomorrow. Oh, shucks, I never get to have any fun. Oh, now you two just keep quiet. Can't you see Mr. Zim ain't feeling to chipper? 
We'll go tomorrow. Oh, yes, thank you, madam. Melko, let's get back to the ship and... Uh, Melko? Melko, where is he? He's under the table. What? Uh, what happened to him? He said he was thirsty, so I gave him a drink. A drink of what? I don't know. It was here in this jug. Two great jumping horn toads. That's a sample Luke and me took out of the still yesterday. What's a still? But then, don't you know? No. <clears throat> well, sir, a still, it's just about the handiest invention us mountain folks ever oh, thought. Oh, yeah. don't you listen to him, Mr. Zim. Them stills is a bunch of nonsense that bring nothing but trouble. Yes, but I, I don't understand. What was it that Malco drank? Well, you regulate that explosion this morning just uh, by the time you came in. Well, yes, it nearly blew us off our course. Well, see, <laughs> your friend just took yourself a swig of that liquid dynamite. Great Jupiter! Yep. I must get him back to the ship at once. Hel help me get him over my shoulders. There you go. Get there you go. <laughs> Looky, Ma, the guy's turned pink now. Gee, he's pretty, ain't he? Reminds me of that the chameleon we used to have. Aw, oh, he's better. The chameleon couldn't turn pink. Pink? Oh, this is terrible. I hope I'm not too late. <laughs> Good night. We'll see you in the morning and settle accounts then. Settle accounts? You don't reckon he's mad, do you, Ma? After all, the critter took a sip out of the jug of his own free will. I didn't even charge him for it. Oh, no, Mr. Zim is just upset. I'll take them down some nice cornmeal mush in the morning. Mm. That'll make them feel good. And then we'll all get that ride in their uh, rocket ship or whatever it is. <laughs> Pa, land sakes, where you been all morning? I ain't seen hide nor hair of you. Oh, no, I've been uh, busy, Ma. Busier than a short-tailed cow in fly time. Uh, you know, always something to do around the place, you know. Always something to be done. Uh, sure, I know it, but I didn't think you did. Well, you remember that busted rain spout on the porch? Used to squirt the water right through the kitchen door every time it rained? Yep. <laughs> well, it's fixed. Pa, you don't mean it. Mm, yep. Well, good for you. Yes, sir. Good for me. But I thought you said the reason you ain't fixed it is because you never could find a funny-shaped pipe like that. It was. But uh, when I was um, kind of digging around and I found one. Well, I'll say it again. Good for you, Pa. Good for me. <laughs> you seen the kids this morning? No, good for me. I heard you, Pa. Well, they all shot out of here after breakfast, and I ain't heard from them since. Well, they was down looking at that rocket ship last time I saw them. They all said for me to tell you to hurry on down so we get that ride those fellas promised us. Oh, mercy sakes, I near forgot. Well, I'll just hang up my apron, Pa. Let's go. Grandpa! Grandpa! Oh, he ain't here, Ma. He was out of the house even before the kids was. Oh, dear. <laughs> Just imagine, Grandpa ain't been out of the house this time of morning since I can't remember when. What's he doing down there? Well, the last I saw of him, he was teaching one of them green fellers how to chaw. How to chaw? Yep. Oh, they'll be sick again, sure as the world. I ain't so sure. One seemed to take to it all right. Well, I... Good lands. Look at those young'uns swarming Would over that machine. Would you stop sliding like off and bumping into me? Doggone, yeah, he getting ahead. Oh, Look, you stop looking, Ma. This is more fun than sliding off a haystack, even. Now, you be careful, Elmo. Well, I'm all right. Look, Ma, I got something for you. Oh, that's nice. What is it? Thought you might use it for a cookie cutter. Well, that would be a good idea, is that? Where'd you get it? I found it laying around in a rocket ship. Oh, but Elmo, you shouldn't be taking it. It wasn't attached to nothing. At least, not very well. Oh, Mrs. Coy, I see you finally arrived. Oh, yeah. I hope you and your friend are feeling better today, Mr. Zim. Oh, yes, yes, we're fine. Well, shall we go? Malco, let's get all aboard. Yes, sir. Come on, everyone. Climb in. You first, Mrs. Coy. Oh, thank you. Come along, children. Hey, hey now. wait for me. Wait. Oh, howdy, Rody. Oh. You needn't be so uppity. I think you got a case on that green thingamawut. He ain't no thingamawut. He's, he's got a heap more manners than you ever had. Oh. Oh, quit your squabbling, you two. Get in, Luke. Grandpa, are you here? <coughs> now, remember what I told you yesterday. You should have thought of that outside. We're all here, then. Good. Shut the door, Malco. Yes, sir. 
Uh, better lock the door, Melko. Lock it? Uh, well, uh, merely a safety precaution, madam. Success. My name will go down in Martian history for this. <laughs> now we're ready. Next stop. <laughs> Start the motors, Melko. Start the motors. Yes, sir. Operation gauge set for 300 million. Firepower self-regulator advanced. Contact. All ready for you to start the dynamatic hydroactivator, sir. Here we go. What's the matter? Stop the motors. I'm trying to, sir. But there seems to be something wrong. Nonsense. There's no such thing as mechanical failure in a Martian space machine. Start them again. Yes, sir. It's no use, sir. You idiot. You don't have to be a mechanic. Adjust the robot to double O and let it check the trouble. Yes, sir. I'll have them... Uh, where's the robot? Where is it? Where do you suppose it is? What's gotten into you, Malco? Now look here, I... I... <laughs> All right, you've had your little joke. Now where is the robot? But I haven't seen it, sir. What? No, sir. It was here when you got up this morning. Don't you remember? You... Oh, What's up the matter, Mr. Zim? It's the robot pilot. It, it's fantastic, but it's disappeared. Uh, what's a robot? It's, uh, it's sort of a mechanical man. Yes, it, it's a highly sensitive machine able to calculate all the necessary instruments to run one of our ships. Oh, I seen you. Hush up, Elmo. You seen what, Elmo? <clears throat> oh, take a stick to me if I tell. Hope, Corey, what have you been up to? Oh, well, you gotta admit we needed a new scarecrow. I tell you, them birds lead you out of the house and home. Oh, you mean you took that, that robot out to the cornfield? What's this? Well, I just thought I'd borrow it for a few days, see how it would do. Oh, I'm ashamed of you. Well, that thing's liable to scare all the birds away, and the bugs will just take the peach crop. Ah, uh, sir, the electromagnetizer is gone, too. Very well. Who took that? Well? Well, does anyone else have a contribution? Ma. Yeah? Ricky better give him back the cookie cutter. Anyone else? <clears throat> Mr. Coy. Oh, you needn't look at me so suspicious like. I wouldn't take Aww. it. I'm, I'm, you know, well. All right, I'll get it off in the rain spout. The almanac said we weren't going to have much rain this year anyhow. Yeah, it's a lucky thing for us that I have some knowledge of the working of these ships. We'll soon be ready to take off. Oh, that's fine, sir. A great lot of help you've been to me, Malco. Sorry, sir. Three weeks it's taken me to put this thing back together, and all you've done is turn around. You might at least keep those people away from the ship until such time... What? What are they doing there, anyway? They're puttering with one of the empty fuel tanks, mixing some kind of liquid in it. Uh, there's nothing they can harm, sir. Uh, there, that does it. Now, let's get the people inside once more so we can get home. Sir, uh, I... uh, There's Mrs. Coy. She seems to have more authority than anyone. I'll ask her to help. Well, Mrs. Coy, we're all set once again. Shall we gather your clan and take that nice ride I promised you? Well, I'm afraid we'll have to call off the ride for now, Mr. Zim. Call it off? Well, you know how kids are once the novelty wore off. Yes, but if you spoke to them, did they... Oh. They've all gone down to the creek to look for crawdads, and I'm canning tomatoes, so I guess we'd better just forget the whole thing. Thanks a heap for the invitation, though. Oh, very well. Maybe next time. Sure thing, Mr. Zim. Next time, I'll have some nice plum butter for you to take back with you, too. Oh, oh what's the use? Well, come on, Malco. Ah, uh, sir, uh, I'd rather not go with you. Oh, that's quite all right. You'd what? That's right, sir. Uh, you see, Rhododendron and I, uh, well, uh, <clears throat> we, we've made plans, sir. You see, she's found me a job here, modeling for something called Halloween masks. <laughs> and I, I... Are you, are you out of your mind? Well, you could never get along here on Earth. Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm catching on to things pretty fast, sir. 
Well, don't think I'm going back without you. I'll not be made a complete fool. Now get in. Oh, but sir, get in here I... with me. Well, no, 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 get in, get in. alive, folks. She's gonna blow up. Look, put too much yeast in her. Head for the dead. What the? Hang on, you ship, Mister Lim. She's gonna blow to the moon. And now a special report. Just when we thought the flying saucers were about over, up comes this story off the wires tonight. A strange, unidentified object has been sighted cruising about the moon. Traveling in spurts, almost as if it had the hiccups, the object bounced off Jupiter, raced through the Big Dipper, and is now merrily chasing itself around and around the moon. What next? Now, here again is the star of our show, Jack Kirkwood. Thank you, Tony. Oh, Lil Lee, come on over here. I, I need your help. Yes, Pop? What is it, Jack? Well, Family Theater has just given me a pretty tough job to do. Just before I went on the show this evening, they said, Jack, after the show's over, come back to the mic and give the commercial. That's all they said. And they just left me standing there. No copy, no nothing. Oh, now, Pop, what's so tough about that? You're an old hand at giving commercials. You've been kidding your sponsors for years. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, that's just the point, though. You wouldn't catch me kidding the sponsor of this show. I wouldn't want to antagonize anybody up there. Not at this stage of the game. Oh, Jack, be serious for once. This isn't going to be as hard as you think if you just give the pitch that you give on any other commercial. Now, first of all, what is the product that Family Theater is selling? Prayer. That's right, family prayer. Because Family Theater believes that when families all over the world begin the practice of daily family prayer when they kneel together nightly and offer their hearts to God, only then will there be peace and happiness in the world. Because, well, because peace in the family assures peace among nations. <laughs> well, you see, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I did a pretty good job, too, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jack, you did. But just one more thing before you finish giving this commercial. <laughs> What's one of the most important things in selling? Something that makes it a lot easier for the customer to remember the product. A slogan? Right. Well? The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Martians and the Coys, starring Jack, Lil, and Lee Kirkwood. Others in our cast were Jay Novello, Paul Fries, Howard Culver, Beverly Washburn, and Peter Votrian. The script was written by William Lutz, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Lou X. Lansworth. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present A Matter of Time, starring Jeffrey Hunter and Barbara Rush. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Music